facts arise When I arrived in this crack, crack, bag, back, slap in disguise Fat sack of knives in the passenger side Bitch, reach for the door, get your axes Alright, so Seattle, you know, Seattle, it's pretty, you know, projected pretty much across the board that the Seahawks are going to really, you know, fall this year, as in, um, you know, they've been a team that have been making the playoffs every year, won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. Um, you know, this has been one of those teams that's been, you know, one of the, like, a lot of people have flocked to the Seahawks over the last couple of years as a team to really like. They like to watch them play. They really like their defense, you know. And this is a point now where people are about to co start coming off the bandwagon. You know, the Legion of Boom is basically dead, you know, with, you know, uh, Cam Chancellor and his neck injury. Richard Sher Sherman is now a 49er. Errol Thomas definitely wants out uh, of Seattle. He's ready for his neck, you know, where he's going next in his career. And uh, so the Legion of Boom is pretty much dead. Um, and... You know, there's still good things on this defense. So, like, you don't, you can't think that, oh, this defense is just terrible now, but it's not what it was. Um, in the secondary, what really, what really held it down and it really created those front seven to really be able to fly all over the place was because you had these lockdown secondary. And that's not something that they're going to have anymore. Um, and, you know, as good as Russell Wilson is on the offensive end of the ball, you know, he was able to get it done in situations when the defense was able to to keep them in games and stuff. And I don't really think that he's going to be able to do that anymore uh, if the defense can't hold hold up its end of the bargain. You know, and a lot of things that the Seahawks did this last summer showed signs that it was a, it, that they're ready to rebuild. But, you know, they, there's a couple of pieces that they've retained that they know that they can build around. Let's talk about that now. So the offense, you know, Russell Wilson, the main focal point of this whole team, you know, was one of the best fantasy players all, all of last year, you know, with his ability to run touchdowns and throw touchdowns. So Russell Wilson is a dynamic player uh, who's probably going to be the best player on this team, the heart and soul of the Seahawks. And, the, and depending on really how much he leads this team, I think depends how far this team gets, you know, gets brought. And so talking about running backs, Rashad Penny, they went ahead first round, went ahead and got Rashad Penny, a guy that they really liked, a guy that had a monster year last year at San Diego State, a guy that I think can be a real stud in this league. Um, now, you know, that's been the real issue for the for the, the Seahawks the last couple of years. They hadn't had any running game. You know, back in the day when they had Marshawn Lynch, they were able to run the ball very well. You know, they didn't deal with a lot of injuries. Now, every two weeks, it's a different guy. Is it Mike Davis? Is it J.D. McKissick? Is it C.J. Prosite? Is it Eddie Lacy? Um, it's a, it, it was a different guy every week last year, Chris Carson, you know, until he got hurt, you know, and it's two, it's one of two things, either the guy gets hurt or the guy just it implodes, you know, uh, Rawls is another one. So they've really had issues with their running back situation over the last couple of years. Rashad Penny should sure that up. And hopefully he's, he's a guy that they, you know, can stop playing these games with trying to figure out who the running back's going to be. Now I will say their offensive line is not one of the best offensive lines, you know, whenever they a couple years ago traded, I think Max Unger for Jimmy Graham, um, that was kind of the start of, you know, their offensive line, you know, going downhill in a sense. They didn't really have that strong of off line, offensive line before, but Mount Unger was a very good player at center, really, uh, really hold it, held it down. You know, at times last year, they're, you know, playing a guy that barely played any college football, I think, he played maybe a little bit in high school or something. I can't remember his name. A uh, German, a uh, was I think his name. Um, so I'm not really impressed by their offensive line. You know, they added Dwayne Brown last year, you know, halfway through the year, uh, or I think early in the year, actually, uh, maybe like week four. And I thought that was a good add. And, you know, it didn't really pan out. You know, they were nine and seven, one game out of the playoff. Ethan Pollock, I think a, a young guy, Justin Britt, DJ Flunker, George Fant. So, I mean, an all right offensive line. We'll see what it well, if it gets anything done. Um, you know, we'll see how Rashad Penny runs this year. Ed Dixon is the tight end. Another reason why I said you kind of saw the rebuild that they were in, the fact that, you know, they were, Jimmy Graham and Russell Wilson were dominant in the red zone last year. That would have been a, an easy thing to keep, to, to keep a sure, you know, red zone type, type situation. And they went ahead and got rid of him, brought Ed Dixon in. You know, I think Ed Dixon's a good ad, not a, not a bad ad. He's been a guy that's, you know, kind of been behind 
Uh, Greg Olson for a number of years uh, was a good player at Oregon when he played at Oregon. So it's not a bad ad, you know, and they lost Luke Wilson as well. So both their tight ends are gone. Talking about their wide receivers, Tyler Lockett. You know, Tyler Lockett's been hurt from uh, here and there a little bit, uh, but he's been a good player playing slot. Jaron Brown came over this last summer, and then Doug Baldwin uh, is a monster uh, for this team. Uh, a guy that I would watch, Marcus Johnson, Amara Darbo. Amara Darbo from Michigan about two years ago or a year ago. Two guys that could, you know, make an impact on the offense end. You know, I think the offense is, is going to be an all right team. It, I don't think this is a team that's going to be scoring tons and tons of points, but I think it's a team that can, you know, stay in certain games if Russell Wilson is able to do what he can and they and they run the ball pretty well, you know. One thing this last year that, you know, the bread and butter for the Seahawks was the read option, and they really kind of get had to get away from that read option with the running back situation. Uh, they went more, you know, pass base, more shotgun. You know, Wilson was in the gun more. Hopefully we get back to more of that that read option style where Wilson can run the ball as, uh, as effectively as he throws the ball. Talking about the defense. Now, we talked a little bit about secondary. Secondary is pretty depleted. Shaquille Griffin, a guy that, you know, was on this team last year, played a little bit with the Legion of Boom, uh, showed promise. This guy could be the future of this, you know, of this team's secondary. Dante Johnson. Uh, another guy on this team, Justin Coleman and Byron Mar uh, Byron Maxwell. I think Byron Maxwell left and he's came back. Um, and then you talk about their safeties. Uh, Bradley McDougal, I think he played a little bit of corner last year. He's playing safety this year. Uh, Maurice Allen. And then they still have er uh, Earl Thomas. Tedrick, Tedrick Thomas is another uh, backup free safety. So the secondary is nothing to write home about. A couple of okay players there. But this is nothing like it was in the past. Um, I really, I'm really a little bit nervous about the Seahawks secondary. I think teams are probably going to go after them uh, in the secondary. Um, and when you talk about their linebackers, you know Bobby, Bobby Wagner, KJ Wright, those guys are awesome together. You know, still some of the scariest you know linebackers in the league. And then they added uh, uh, Shaq Griffin. Uh, the other Griffin, I know I've probably said, I think I've, it's like Shaquem and Shaquille. So Shaquille is the cornerback. Shaquem is the linebacker. And this is the one that has one hand. He's amazing, though. I saw him pick Russell Wilson the other day. Um, and I, I think that he's going to be that outside linebacker with Wagner and Wright instead of Mingo. You know, they kind of have Mingo slated as the guy, but I think Griffin will take over that spot. He's just, he's just a ball hawker. He makes too many plays on the defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, and then Frank Clark, he kind of took over as the guy on the defensive line last year. Deion, jo Deion Jordan had, you know, four sacks in five games. He could make a really good impact uh, to start this year. Jaron Reed, uh, one of the younger guys. And then Tom Johnson, one of the more underrated free agent signings um, of this offseason. You know, he, he's a guy that played, you know, 70% of the snaps – at a, as a Viking, he's came over as a defensive tackle this year, um, you know, replaced Sheldon Richardson. Paul Richardson's gone. He's in Washington. Thomas Rawls gone. Jimmy Graham, um, Michael Bennett. You know, the, every big-name player, basically, that you can remember from, like, those Legion of Boom days, you know, the Michael Bennett, the, the you know, the Richard Sherman, those type guys, Luke Wilson, those guys are all gone. You know, Cam Chancellor's basically done. Um, brought in Maurice Alexander from the Rams this last year. Not a bad player. We'll see if he gets to play some. Jaron Brown from Arizona. Ed Dixon, DJ Fluker, or Flunker from the Giants. Jenikowski is the kicker from Oakland. He's the kicker now. Uh, Dante Johnson from San Francisco. The cornerback that they added, Marcus Johnson, wide receiver from Philadelphia. Tom Johnson uh, from Minnesota. And then Mingo from the Colts. So I, I think this is going to be a tough year. I don't think this team makes the playoffs. I think there's too many other good teams in the NFC, you know, in that wild card race. You know, I definitely think the Rams win this division. I think the Rams are the best team. And I just don't think that the Seahawks are, you know, are good enough on the, on, on, you know, the, offensive, the offensive side of the ball. And I don't think they're good enough in the secondary to really compete this year. Um, and then you talk about their draft class. You talk about Rashad Penny, Rash, uh, Rasheen Green, defensive end. 
Maybe he'll get to play a little bit this year out of USC. Will Disley, Disley tied in. Was not really impressed with him, but he was a really good blocking tight end. Griffin uh, from uh, UCF. And then, oh, they added Trey Flowers. I think Trey Flowers could be – this guy was Cam Chancellor-esque. I really liked what I saw out of him at Oklahoma State. I think he's a guy that could come in and be like Cam Chancellor. So watch out for uh, Trey Flowers in the next couple of years. Michael Dixon, really, really good punter from Texas. This is probably my funner, my favorite punter um, in the draft. Really good punter. Jamarco Jones, a tackle from Ohio State. Jacob Martin, DN from Temple. And then Alex uh, McGlog from FIU. Not really impressed with him, but that's another guy that they added. And then some keys that I said this last summer that the Seahawks ought to do. A reliable running back, Rashad Penny, is that reliable running back. Address the tight end situation, draft one. They drafted Will Dissey, uh, and they added Ed Dixon. Draft offensive line. They drafted one offensive lineman. And Jamarco Jones, their offensive line, I think, is probably one of their weakest points and that they need to improve. Find an X wide receiver. I say find an X wide receiver because, you know, you lost Paul Richardson. You know, Jaron Brown's not really an X. Tyler Lockett is a slot type guy. Doug Baldwin doesn't really play X. I mean, he can, but he's not really an X. He's too small for that. So they didn't really do that either. Um, draft defense, the t- defensive tackles and linebackers. Did a good job of that. Drafted a, uh, a linebacker and two defensive ends. And then um, I just – lots of key free agents with no money. So that was a big issue this last year. They had a lot of key free agents, no money. You know, Luke Jokel, Eddie Lacy, Jimmy Graham, Sheldon Richardson, Luke Wilson. You know, they lost a lot this summer because of the money that they didn't have on the books. You know, probably a couple of years ago when they decided to play – to decide to pay Russell Wilson, that's probably was detrimental to this year. But yeah, I mean, I don't think the Seahawks make the playoffs. Um, I think they're definitely rebuilding. And um, but I don't think that this is one of those teams that's like it's getting worse and it's going to be bad for a while. I think they did a good job, a good job in the draft this last year. Drafted some really key guys that are going to solidify this team in the future. Dropped a lot of the heavy weight that was just mainly names more than guys that were really doing something week to week. So I think that was good too, and I, I I don't think that the front seven really has gotten that much worse, um, and I think it's the back four that's really got worse on the defense for them, and 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 you know the the offense wasn't awesome last year, and I think the offense is going to be fine this year, you know with with the people that they bring to the table, it's just going to really be can the defense be the backbone that it's been, and I don't think that's going to be the case. We got teams like the Falcons and the Panthers, Cowboys. I don't really think there's going to be a wild card spot available, you know, and then I, I mean, obviously I think they're on par with the Niners, you know, the Niners, I think are going to be a good team this year as well. Gang will get diminished, punch got the Brady's in it, spick six shit like my saliva got the rabies in it, fuck rap, I'll be a landlord so I can wait for tenants, daughter leave my house with a new stomach and a baby in it. Face it, me and Ace is sick like malaria, 